This question came in on Instagram. It reads, hi, Dr. Carmen, can you share your opinion on Vizan for endometriosis, please? And this is not the first time I'm getting this question, so let's talk about it. So we're gonna be talking about what is Vizan, why it is prescribed and how it works, some of the side effects of this medication and my thoughts on using Vizan for endometriosis. Endometriosis is the condition that we use Vizan for. And for those of you who don't know, endometriosis is a condition where the cells that are similar to the ones that are inside the uterus in the uterine lining will actually start to develop outside of the uterus. And they'll begin to attach themselves to different organs in your pelvis and they respond to your body's hormones the same way that your lining of your uterus responds to your body's hormones. And so during certain times of the month, that lining will begin to thicken and grow. And then in other times, when you're having your period, for example, that tissue will begin to bleed and shed. And the the problem with endometriosis is that lining of your uterus has an exit point. It can go through the vaginal canal and it comes out as your period. But those patches of that lining that are outside of the uterus actually don't have a way to to leave your body. There's no exit route. So they end up bleeding and they can form scar tissue and cysts and they can almost act like glue inside your pelvis, sticking organs in your pelvis together. And so endometriosis is a very painful condition. Oftentimes people will have pelvic pain all the time, worse when they are menstruating. And then it can also lead to things like infertility, bladder and bowel issues. It's just a really painful, whole body negative experience and so it is also a, a, a bit of a difficult condition to treat and so one of the treatment options that we have for endometriosis is Vizan that is a synthetic progesterone now progesterone is one of our major hormones that we produce during the menstrual cycle and progesterone is actually produced when we ovulate so when you release an egg from your ovary a gland that gets left behind on your ovary called the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum will then begin to produce progesterone. Now, progesterone is also known as the pregnancy hormone, and that's because one of its main functions is to maintain the lining of your uterus in the hopes that you get pregnant. And so that corpus luteum starts to produce progesterone, making sure that that lining is nice and thick and nutritious for a potential baby. So if you do get a fertilized egg, implanting in the lining of the uterus that corpus luteum will continue to pump out progesterone making sure that that lining remains intact until such a time where the placenta starts to develop and then eventually the placenta will take over the production of progesterone now progesterone has wonderful effects for our overall health and well-being it's a key hormone in the maturing of our reproductive system, but it's also a very calming hormone. It's the hormone that really makes you feel chilled. It reduces anxiety, it helps to stabilize your mood, and it's part of the reason why when women go through menopause, they experience anxiety. It's because they stop ovulating, so they stop producing progesterone. And as a result of that, they start to get really antsy and anxious. So. What happens in endometriosis and why do we use synthetic progesterone to treat endometriosis? Well, in your body, your hormones are in a delicate balance and two of your major hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And they kind of work in sync with each other and fluctuate throughout the menstrual cycle to do a host of things, making sure that essentially your body is ready and prepared for pregnancy. And so what happens is that that lining of the uterus that we were talking about actually responds to both estrogen and progesterone, but it grows and thickens under the influence of estrogen, estradiol in particular, which is a type of estrogen. The problem is that lining or that tissue that's starting to grow outside of the uterus also responds to estradiol and or estrogen, right? And so what is happening is that it's believed that in endometriosis, people are relatively higher in estrogen versus progesterone. So that balance, that ratio of estrogen and progesterone in people with endometriosis seems to be a bit off. And so they experience what's, what's known as a relative estrogen dominance, which is where Estrogen's the bully, it's basically ruling the show, it's calling the shots, it's the one that's actually 
causing these cells outside of the uterus to start growing and thickening and causing more scar tissue and more cysts to develop. And so essentially what we're trying to do with Vizan is we're trying to bring that ratio back into balance. And so we're trying to boost and increase the amount of progesterone or the effect of progesterone to counteract that high estrogen. And so the way that it's done is by giving a synthetic type of progesterone. So in other words, it's made in the lab. It's not extracted from humans or animals. It's a synthetic type of progesterone that attaches to the same receptors that your progesterone does in the lining of the uterus. And it ultimately reduces how much estrogen is produced. And it also reduces those patches of tissue that are outside of the uterus. It reduces them in size. And so eventually over a period of time, what happens is that those patches outside the uterus start to diminish and the symptoms of endometriosis also start to become more manageable. And so that's how Vizan works, a synthetic progesterone that reduces the effect of estrogen so that those patches outside of the uterus can begin to shrink and so that you don't develop new patches. So what's the problem with this? How, what, like why is, that sounds fantastic, right? It sounds amazing. And it really is. I mean, if you think about what's actually happening under the influence of this medication, it is quite remarkable. So what are some of the negative sides of this medication? Well, remember that Vizan is a synthetic hormone. And so hormones will affect our bodies differently. So they may have one effect on me and a different effect on you. So some of the common symptoms that you may experience on Vizan include things like headache, breast tenderness, depressed mood, and acne. These are some of the experiences of people who have taken this medication. And these are really considered like the minor um, effects of being on this medication. And again, it may, you may have this experience, but it may not actually happen to you. This medication may also lead to changes in vaginal bleeding. So you may lose your bleeding altogether. You may experience um, more frequent bleeding. You may experience very heavy bleeding. You may experience irregular bleeding, prolonged bleeding, spotting in between your bleeds. So ultimately, because this is a hormone that is impacting on the lining of your uterus, vaginal bleeding is something that may become more erratic while taking this medication. Hey, if you're getting value from this video so far, please go ahead and like it. And if you aren't already and this content is your jam, then go ahead and subscribe. Also, if your bleeding becomes excessively heavy, this may lead to iron deficiency anemia. And Vizan can also potentially make conditions like fibroids of the uterus or even adenomyosis, where that lining of the uterus grows inside the actual muscle of the uterus itself. Vizan can potentially make those conditions worse. So some of the more serious potential side effects of this medication include developing blood clots. So this can range from developing a blood clot in your leg, which is a deep vein thrombosis, or even in your lungs, which is a pulmonary embolism. Or you can even increase your risk of developing a stroke and or having a heart attack. In particular, people who smoke, people who have high blood pressure, these people should actually be very closely monitored before this medication is started. So because of the way Vizan works by reducing your estrogen production, one of the concerns is that it may potentially impact your bone density. So in the clinical trial, when they were studying this medication for the first time, one of the studies showed that this medication can actually reduce the density of your bones. It happened in a very small percentage of the people who were studied, like something like just over 1%. And in particular, the concern was that the density or bone density was affected in patients who were in the adolescence. So it was noted that when the medication was stopped, that their bone density went back to normal. Still uncertain whether this could potentially have long-term effects and potentially increase the risk of fractures. Vizan can also potentially increase your risk of developing certain cancers. So Vizan is not a contraceptive, okay? So it hasn't been studied for its use 
in preventing pregnancy and it's one of the reasons why when you're on Vizan it's advisable to double up on another non-hormone contraceptive like condoms for example but in a similar way to how your risk of breast cancer for example can increase when you are taking progesterone only contraceptives it's believed that the risk is potentially the same for people using Vizan. There have also been cases of liver tumors that have developed while on this medication both benign so non-cancerous and, and malignant tumors as well so cancerous tumors of the liver also have been reported. So there are certain people who should absolutely not be taking this medication and that includes people who are pregnant so if you are pregnant Vizan is contraindicated you're not supposed to be on this medication likewise if you're breastfeeding or lactating you shouldn't be taking this medication also people who have active blood clotting or perhaps just recently had a blood clot people also who have liver issues so if your liver function is impaired or if you have some kind of inflammation going on or active liver disease then you shouldn't be on this medication part of the reason for that is because Vizan is actually metabolized or broken down in the liver and so this may overwhelm your liver and potentially lead to toxicity. So a thorough medical assessment and gynecological assessment by your doctor is advised before starting this medication to get your baseline and also while you're taking this medication just to make sure that you're not developing any adverse reactions to this drug. So what are my thoughts on using Vizan in endometriosis? Well let's first and foremost say that each person is going to have a different experience and likewise when it comes to endometriosis some people have very mild symptoms and some people have very severe symptoms. The way I think about it from an integrative medicine perspective is that there are a number of things and especially in endometriosis is one of those conditions where there are a number of things, a number of lifestyle changes and interventions that we can start doing to help improve symptoms, increase fertility and potentially even reduce the burden of disease for people who are experiencing symptoms as a result of endometriosis before we even get to the medications. Now having said that this is a potentially life destroying condition. So if you're having extreme symptoms, you know, severe illness, you're requiring surgery, we may have no other options but going the pharmaceutical route because we have clinical trials to show that this medication does actually reduce the burden of disease. However, even in doing that, there are a list, a number, a host of things that we could be doing to actually improve your overall health and well-being while managing the symptoms of endometriosis. And so what I'm saying here is that it really depends person to person what the best approach should be. And so I'm all for adopting a holistic approach and I would never just recommend medication without the lifestyle interventions. The way I see it is that the lifestyle interventions are the foundation, they're the base, they're the thing that everybody with this condition should be doing as it pertains to them. Because for every person there are going to be different underlying root causes. It may be a gut imbalance, it may be a hormone imbalance, it may be an immune imbalance, it may be a stress mediated response, it may be toxicity and exposure to a variety of chemicals in your environment. It may be a combination of all of those, it may be something else. And so getting down to the root causes or the things that are actually making your condition worse for you to me is the starting point. And then addressing those things and implementing the lifestyle changes that we know will help to improve symptoms is the foundation. And then building upon that, we can add now other interventions. So whether that includes things like using essential oils. I know that oftentimes people will rely on essential oils in the same way as they rely on medications. It doesn't work because essential oils are not pharmaceutical drugs. But in combination with a variety of other lifestyle changes, they can definitely contribute to your overall well-being. And so whether we're including things like essential oils or massage or acupuncture, whether we're considering introducing medical cannabis, 
whether there are certain foods that could be included into the diet, certain herbs that we could be including, optimizing sleep, reducing stress. All these things for me are the things that we should be focusing on regardless of whether we opt to add in pharmaceuticals or not. For me, it's a stepwise approach. This foundation, which is getting to the root cause. And then second is the interventions that we can do to help to improve your symptom. There are a variety of things in that level that we can do. And then from there, do you actually require pharmaceutical interventions? Do you require taking that medication? And then how long do you need to be on that medication for? So endometriosis is a chronic medical condition. And so we should be looking at it in the same way as we should look at all chronic conditions, which is that we need to focus on developing the lifestyle changes that are required in order to improve our overall health and wellness. And the medication should be complementary to that. I think the problem comes in where we start to focus on using the pill for every ill. So every time you know we have a symptom, we look to medication. Remembering that the medication, when it's stopped, the underlying condition will still be there. And so it's kind of the same as if you were driving your car and your dashboard, you know, the petrol light came on that your tank is empty and you just like covered it and pretended that it's not there. When you take that cover off, your tank is actually empty and that's not that problem. The root of the problem is not going to go away. So in combination with pharmaceuticals and other interventions, it's important for us to get to the root of the problem and to address the symptoms and to begin to focus not just on how do I take the symptoms away and how do I feel less pain, but rather how do I improve my overall health? And so that's, that's what we're doing when we're taking an integrative approach. So I'm thinking about having a live masterclass, specifically diving into endometriosis and all the things that we can do from an integrative medicine approach to help relieve your symptoms and help you get your life back and feel better. So if that interests you, then let me know in the comments and I will share further details on when and where this will be happening. And I hope to see you there. And if you have any questions about Vizan, or anything that I haven't touched on that you're unsure about, let me know in the comments as well. And if you are based in South Africa and you want to book a consultation with me, you can feel free to use the link in the description below as well. And so I hope that this shed a little bit of light on this very complicated condition to treat. And I hope that you learned something. So if you did, please go ahead and like this video. It really helps me get this information out to more people. And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and watch this video next because this is the video that YouTube thinks you would enjoy the most. Until next time, take care of yourself. Bye.